Welcome to the Bob Balance Health Cast, episode number 510. Your blood type determines your susceptibility to different infections. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Moffin, we did a podcast two or three years ago, a series of podcasts, I believe, about blood type and diet and the kinds of foods that people with different blood types respond to better mm-hmm. and, and ha- are healthier when they eat those kinds of foods. And lately, I, I think because of the coronavirus, there there have been a lot of concerns about who's more susceptible, who's more likely to get it, who's more likely to have a severe episode of it or even die from it than somebody else. Is based there on, something based that... Based on blood type. Well, that's the question I want to ask you. Because I'm reading some things that say, well, we need to know the blood type because it, the severity or even the opportunity uh, is dependent on your blood type. Right. So can you talk a little bit about what blood types are, what mm-hmm. the different blood types are, and then, then we can talk about how that impacts your potential to get an infection. Right. So, so we all have one of four blood types, O, A, B, or AB. That really indicates whether our red blood cells, the ones that carry oxygen, have a little glycoprotein, it's like a sugar protein, stuck on the outside of it, that identifies that blood. Basically, if you have an A antigen, that means you're an A. If you have a B antigen, that means you're a B. If you have no antigens, no little glycoproteins, then you're an O. So we blood type, I mean, blood types are easy. They're, you can get them through your lab or you can actually go online and get an $8 test to figure out what your blood type so, is. So these are red blood cells. Red blood cells. And they have antigens or little hooks that say A hook, B hook. Mm-hmm. And they don't have a hook, it's an O. Right. And the O then is considered to be the universal right. donor. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I have to go get a blood transfusion, mm-hmm. they either give me O or mm-hmm. they give me your blood uh, type. my blood type. Or, or plasma. Is plasma the same? Plasma is, is the part of your blood that does not have any red blood cells in it. So it's just the liquid around the red blood cells. So that has clotting factors in it. But but anybody can get the same plasma. We take out the the red blood cells, and that can go to any blood type. So that's more volume and clotting. Right. Okay. So if if, if I need a transfusion, Mm -hmm. they need to know what I am, or they will give me O, or they will just give me plasma to get me stabilized. They, yeah, that that won't help your oxygen carrying capacity, but that'll bring your blood pressure up. That's kind of how we use it. But but in this case, we're looking at the fact that you inherit your A or your B or your O or your AB from uh-huh. uh, each of your parents. It's a it's a two gene. It's a, it's kind of a two gene thing. If you have an A and an O, you're an A. A is dominant. Okay. If you have a B and an O, you're a B. Like Gregor Mendel. Dominant, right. recessive. It's, it's just like what you learned in third grade okay. about, about plants. But if you have an A and a B, you're an AB. And if you have only O's, you're an O. Okay. So, so that's how we get our blood type. But then our blood type determines a lot of things. It determines what our best food is for our metabolism. But in this case, we're looking at how blood type affects how easily we can get infections okay, so what, from what, specific things. One more fundamental question before mm-hmm. we get into that. We have another type of blood cells mm-hmm. that, that are like police officers who chase down burglars and things uh, inside our blood system, and that they're white blood cells. Right. So you, and so white blood cells circulate around looking for problems. Like if I, if I get a cut on my arm uh, working in the yard mm-hmm. and, and I get a – blood scab on top of it and get a little that's pus your, in it and all that's that. That's all your white cells. It's white blood cells that come to that spot and because an alarm goes off and says, you know, break in right here. Mm-hmm. And, and it but comes. those are healing part, types of white blood cells. And then there's white blood cells that are like T killer cells, T helper cells. Those are white blood cells that go after 
cancer cells and kill them. They go after uh, viruses. They go after bacteria. So those are killer cells. Those are killer cells, and they go after these things that invade your body. It's really important in terms of infection for you to know that when you're infected, you can breathe in all kinds of virus, virus, but if your body kills it right away, you don't get infected. You don't get, you don't get antibodies to it. You don't get the infection at all. Your body has killed off that virus. So what we're learning with COVID is that not everybody is susceptible to COVID because there are certain people who are more susceptible than others. So, so does that mean they won't get it or they just won't ever be symptomatic? Both. Okay. So many people won't get it. So it's and it's this is this is kind of across all the viral lines and bacterial lines. You've known people like somebody in your in your office. Everybody's exposed to the same person coughing, and two people get sick. That's because their immune system did not kill off the virus or the bacteria. So let's so we're going to use virus as our example. In the case of viruses. You, your body will kill off the virus that does not look like the rest of your cells in your body. So if something comes in and it looks foreign, your body goes, that's foreign, I have to kill it, and they kill it. So basically, we all get cancer cells every day. We make them, our body kills them. And so if, if they view that cancer cell as foreign, they kill it, and we don't get cancer. If we, we get exposed to all kinds of infections every day, and we don't get the infection because our immune system says, oh, that's foreign material, I'm going to kill it. So can you say scientifically then that there will be a cluster of people in a population zone like the United States that are more likely to get cancer, that they will have a serious disease from or it's even die from? based on their blood type. Based on their blood type. Because if, so if a cancer cell looks like an A and you're an A, right. then your body goes, oh, that's probably me. I'm not going to kill it. So global population in the United States, 53% have O, 31% have A. So if cancer is more prevalent among the A's, then I would have just from out of the gate a 31% chance of getting a cancer that my body won't be able to fight? Am I understanding no, that correctly? you're not. No. Okay, good. Thank you. Help me with that. No. No, that's – you're talking about out of all the blood types. Yes. Who has A, 31%. Out of those people, they are more likely than a B to get cancer because okay. cancer cells look like a antigen, that little glycoprotein. Right. Cancer cells look like that. So A's tend to get get cancer more because more than a B or an O or an AB because they view that cancer cell as so that's I'm an, normal. I'm an A. I'm going to keep it. And I have an A antigen infection, disease, cancer, whatever. My white blood cells looking for that invader are not going to see it. Right. They're going to say, oh, that's just self. Okay. That's just part of my family. I'm not going to kill it. Okay. So so that's, and there are some, let's go to viruses. There are some viruses and some bacteria and some um, and some uh, fungi that, that look like both A and B. So it's not. So, so they mimic? They, they look like it. It, it. To your body, it looks similar. Okay. So it's, your body looks at it and says, if, if, it's a, if I'm a B, so if it's, it looks like a B antigen, like on my blood cells, we don't, want us, we don't want to be killing our own blood cells off. So it's a protection that we've developed over time to protect ourselves from, from killing ourselves by killing off our own red cells. So, so we look at it and it's like, just like red cells, we aren't going to kill that. So um, unfortunately, Bs, <laughs> the, B, the B blood type, has a lot of similarity to many tissues in our body, like our joints or um, our skin. So, a, so bees have a lot more autoimmune, where they I was just attack ask themselves, about that. like rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis or so, lupus, or okay. um, sarcoidosis, or um, MS. So, if I were a bee and I encountered an opportunistic infection. Mm -hmm. That look like bees. Mm -hmm. I would or wouldn't kill it. You wouldn't kill the opportunistic infection, but you may have a delayed response to kill your own tissues because that it looks like what you were trying to attack. You didn't want to attack your okay. B cells initially, so you're not attacking your blood. You're attacking these other proteins in your body All right. or other areas of your body. It's very complicated. This is not yeah, an easy thing. No, it's not to understand or to describe, but. Um, Basically, one, one of the things 
that I wanted to I wanted to get across is that not everybody is susceptible to the same things. Right. And we can divide people up into groups based on what an infection and, or and a anybody cell can looks get like. it, but most people won't unless right. they're in that category. Right. The only ca- so the only catch to that is if you are any blood type and you're on steroids or you're on an uh, uh, an autoimmune medicine that kills off all of your healthy killer cells, right. then you can get anything. Yes. Because because your, your immune system is you. not working and yeah. it can't kill off cancer cells. And a lot of people get cancer after using autoimmune uh, medicine because their their cells they sneak through. So they don't get killed. So when we were prepping for this, you were explaining to me that in Western Europe in the 1300s, <laughs> almost everybody had the same blood type, and the bubonic plague came, and it that's came. why they had the blood the same blood type. Okay, so, so let me let me go backwards. Help me understand. How, obviously, I didn't explain it well. <laughs> so, um, the bubonic plague was uh, was a bacteria, Yersinia, Yersinia pestis, that was uh, that was given to humans from rat fleas. And in those in in the 1100s, nothing was clean, dirt floors. No, I mean rats open were in sewer your house. systems. Yeah, sewers were right right in your house, basically. And there there were rats everywhere. So these rats came off the boats from China and they carried a this bacteria. Well, the fleas from the rats then jumped onto humans. So when they jumped onto humans, they bit them. And they transmitted Yersinia pestis to humans. But not everybody got it. So there was one group of people who did not get it. Because Yersinia pestis looks more like O and, and B, all the O and Bs died because they couldn't fight this infection. But all the A's then lived. Even if they were even if they were bitten, even if they had the bacteria come in, they killed those that that bacteria. So their blood type saved them. So what happened after that is a third of the world died during that time. Between eleven hundred and thirteen hundred, you're the historian. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So um a third of the of the world, and most of those people that died were O's, B's, and A's, but the A's lived, and so Western Europe was the place that was most affected, and so all of Western Europe became A. They survived. Everybody else died. Yeah. So that's how Western Europe became A. Now every time people move around. They bring in their blood type. They cry, they marry into a population. Different migrations. They're bringing yeah. in their own blood types, and the, then things mm-hmm. start getting beco- becoming um, becoming uh, basically a new a new blood type to come in and then be be um, I want to say integrated into the system. Yeah. So 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 that's how Western Europe is not all now. A, because lots of different populations have moved in. But, it, but it's all still A, B, and O. It's combinations of well, those, like right, A, B. It's not like a new else. one like C or F. Or no. No, we have not had a new um, blood type in a lo- in many, 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 many years. Centuries, yeah. So A, B was the last blood type to be uh, mutated. So the original blood type was O. Um, the, the beginning of humankind was O. And then we mutated to become A's. And then the next mutation was B. And the last mutation was basically AB. Okay. So these are so that is how a bacteria that we have followed follows blood types and affects our population. So we then um, looked at the uh, excuse me the we took looked at the coronavirus. We'll do that at the end. But the Norwalk virus is another virus that follows blood types. They don't know exactly how it follows this blood type. But it turns out that the if somebody was an O, which is like a lot of the, that's the majority of the population. So before we get the Norwalk virus is one that primarily attacks the uh, gut the biome, the gastrointestinal right. uh, section of your body. Gives you terrible diarrhea, de- terrible nausea, vomiting, terrible gut distress. Okay, and you can die of dehydration from it. I mean, it, it can be deadly. Okay, so it was found that. If, it, if people were exposed to it, that the only people that got it or died of it who were immune competent, meaning not on those other medications or anything, mm-hmm. were O's. O's died of the Norwalk virus. 
So they were more susceptible. Now, O's don't have antigens on their, on their, um, they don't have at least the ABO antigen. There's no antigen on the O blood cell. So they're not exactly sure how this works. It could work through genetics. It could be attached to the blood type somewhere in the genes. And that causes these um, people to be more susceptible to this. So they don't virus. know why or how, they just know that. Right. Okay. That so, if you have this blood type, you're more susceptible right. to it. So they're getting more specific in finding out what diseases are worse for what blood types. So it's not just viruses that are worse for O's because the coronavirus is worse for A's. Okay. A's get it much worse than right. O's or B's. So that basically it looks like an A. It has an A antigen, looks like that. So O's and B's kill it. So would it A's also don't. be true for the Norwalk virus if you're immune compromised or if you have some other mm -hmm. significant health issue? If you have a different blood type, you could still get it. Okay. So if you're immune compromised, all bets are off. I mean, you can get anything. Right. I mean, it's, it's not going to follow the rules of blood type. It's not going to follow the rules necessarily of genetics even because okay. you could get anything if you don't have your immune system up and running. It is a miracle, I think it's a miracle, that we actually are alive, surrounded by all these bugs, viruses, cancer, cancer cells change, occurring every day. To me, it's just a miracle that we actually can live and our internal system fights off all of these things like an army. Our immune system so you're, is... you're feeding all those germ phobics and OCD people Well, out I'm there. sorry. I don't mean to be. I'm saying your body's... <laughs> don't breathe. Don't move. Don't talk. No, don't touch I'm, anything. I'm saying you're protected. You're miraculously yeah, it's protected. It's truly astonishing. It and, really is. And that, that makes us able to live and be productive and populate the earth. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have the ability to do that without our immune system. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to keep your immune system healthy, especially now. But you can breathe a little easier... In terms of the coronavirus, if you're an O or a B, if you're immune competent. And, and basically, if you're an, an A, then you have to be more careful. Mm -hmm. That really is all that says. Okay. Now, immune systems decrease as we get older. So we still have older people are still at more risk uh, to, to get any virus, bacteria, anything. So... What I do in my practice is treat people with testosterone, which then stimulates their immune system to be more, I say, to be younger, to be more like somebody who's 30 or 40 mm -hmm. instead of somebody who's 60 or 70. So we can regain that. Our T cells can be stimulated and can be increased in number by testosterone. So you start with testosterone. Mm -hmm. But if you get somebody that's significantly older like I am or mm -hmm. that has some other compromising issue, mm -hmm. there are some newer things that you can do like thymosin A, which is right. a peptide mm -hmm. that is known to attack cancer tumors and it, improve the immune system. Right. It, it stimulates, in an older population. stimulates your thymus, you know, the sweetbreads we mm. talked about one time before. Sweetbreads are the animal thymus. We eat it, believe it or not. But mm. we have thymus, a big thymus gland right here, right behind our breastbone when we're little, when we're children. And it gets smaller and smaller as we get older, which the thymus makes white blood cells, and it makes T killer cells, and it makes T helper cells. So, so basically, if your thymus has shrunk and your immune system is not working very well, we've given you testosterone, you're still having trouble with your immunity, then we use a peptide, a tiny little piece of a protein that stimulates your thymus to grow and make T cells. So we've been So you don't artificially give us T cells. No. You encourage our natural production mm -hmm. from our own thymus. It's always better if we make your body do what it did when it was younger, yeah. then if we replace it, but sometimes like with testosterone, we have to replace it. We can't right. make it happen. Right. But, but in this case, we stimulate your own T cells. So then your immune system acts like a younger person, so your risk of getting sick overall is more like somebody who's 40, not somebody who's 70. So at the end of the day then, what someone like myself should hear in this conversation is that if you know your blood type, mm -hmm. then you can know that you're more or less likely than most people mm -hmm. to get some of these infections mm -hmm. or some of these viruses. Mm -hmm. And then that gives you the opportunity to find out what you need to do, like coronavirus. Mm -hmm. How do I avoid the spread? How do I find out where it might be so that I can avoid that if I'm more likely to be a victim of it? Right. So and with the social distance, wear a mask, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. I need to be more careful about those things than mm -hmm. somebody with a different blood right. type 
and somebody that's significantly younger. Right. Or, okay. And if you and and having said that, anybody who's on drugs for autoimmunity or steroids yes. chronically, I mean, taking steroids all the time or something else, some other type of medication that decreases your immunity, you have to be really careful all the time, no matter what your blood type is, because that changes everything. If your immune system is being suppressed, then you can't fight these things that are out there. So you need to make sure you don't get exposed to them. Right. The rest of us can kind of play our odds. <laughs> and have to. And have to. <laughs> so, so be careful. It's a dangerous world out there. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.